Okay. There we go. Good? Yeah, we're good. All right. Look at that. Broadcasting out to the world. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. Great. Well, welcome, guys. Um, I'd like to welcome our senior PBL class um, to the Edney Building. This is the fifth floor of the Edney Building, which is a recent um, part uh, acquisition of the Innovation District here in Chattanooga. Um, it is an open space, a community space for you guys to come and work on your ideas. Um, it's open to entrepreneurs. And so we're going to tour the space after this time, but I just wanted to welcome you guys. And I wanted to personally thank Mike Bradshaw for his partnership. Mike is the CEO president of the CoLab, which is, has just moved from Market Street downstairs on the Edney Building. And um, I want to thank you for coming and giving your time. So let's welcome Mr. Bradshaw. Thank you. Thank you. Um, nice to see you again. If you remember, we met uh, back at the beginning of, of this term and uh, got things kicked off with the business model canvas. And I hope that you've had a good experience so far. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the pitch, right? The pitch. This is where you get up and you sell your idea to uh, somebody that you hope is going to invest in it, right? Make it happen. And in order to do that, like anything that you want to, it's an, an act of persuasion. So your pitch is to truthfully and accurately, but with aspiration, set out what you have done, what you're going to do, why it matters, and get the people that you're listening to to go, OK, I want to be involved in that. It's that simple, right? At the high level. So as I understand it, we're going to have a situation where you're going to be pitching to a set of potential investors in the projects that you've been working on. So think about that. From a purely financial point of view, what you're doing is you're asking people to exchange their money you know, things, this is money that they put in their bank account and probably looks pretty good to them in their bank account. But maybe it's not earning the kind of return that they want. You know, you know, invest your money and you expect to make some money off of having that money invested. Maybe in the bank it doesn't give a good enough return. Maybe they're looking for other opportunities that produce greater returns. At any rate, what they're hoping to do is to sell their money to you, in essence, right? and they want to get back value for it, which in the case of the money business is even more money. <laughs> it's a really interesting thing in that way. Okay, does that make sense? So these folks that are going to be listening to you are looking for a place to put their money. And they're going to put it in a place where, the, one, it's going to make them money, but two, bonus if it accomplishes something that is meaningful to them, right? And if it's an investment that maybe they can help you make money so I'm going to talk very briefly about the difference between a strategic investor and a financial investor. And you talk to them differently. Uh, a strategic investor is one that says, OK, we have a position in an industry which you're approaching with your startup. All right, Your business idea can have some impact in a business that I'm already present within. And our presence in that industry can help you become profitable. So they have maybe a different set of things that will help them decide to invest in you than a purely financial investor who's like, I don't want anything to do with your business. You know, I don't care about the business. What I care about is the money that the business generates. Okay? And in that case, you're not going to be able to play the emotion card very hard, and you're not going to be able to play... Um, I guess if, if you're familiar with the term synergy, that our business is synergistic with your business, and if you come in with the money, we'll all like you know have some exponential return on it because of that synergy. You know, you usually won't get that play with a financial investor. So a financial investor, you've got to have the numbers worked out. Okay. Strategic investor, you sort of bring their imagination into play. Okay, now it's, it's not that you can't make a financial investor become somebody that really cares about your business. And the pitch's job is to do that 
but if you've got strategic investors in front of you, and let's assume for the sake of this project that the folks that you're talking to really want to hear something interesting from you. They are interested in you as a company that accomplishes a certain goal that they share, right? And they want to support you. You just have to give them a really good reason to do it versus we're going to come in and talk dollars and cents, and if you give me 500 grand or you give me a million dollars today, I'm going to give you 10 million in five years, right? Different conversation. Elements of, of the financial comes into play, strong elements on the strategic investment side, but you can really punch to the story too. So let's talk about the elements of a pitch that's designed for that type of an investor, somebody that understands the space you're in a little bit, cares about the, the industry, and wants to go. Take it, you're all, tell me if you're not working on a science-based project. Okay, that, I'm taking that we got 100% working on, yeah. Oh, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about the things you're doing. Yeah, agricultural. Yeah, but a technology in agriculture? Absolutely, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but we'll go with absolutely, okay? So we'll be okay there, right? Okay, we're okay. What are you doing? Hmm. That is interesting. Are you using a technology to make those connections? Okay, good enough. Then we have a technological play there. Your, the underpinnings of your of your business is a technology platform. Yeah. Anybody else want to share what you're doing? You think it's relevant? Okay. So let's go ahead and look at the basic elements of a pitch. You got several things. In both these cases, you're probably solving a problem for somebody. Send it. You look at. And I think you've been carrying this line of thought through from the beginning. You're solving a problem. You're not building this beautiful product because you just love building stuff, right? You're building it for a purpose. You have built your product or service for a purpose. And that purpose is generally to provide somebody with some benefit in the form of making something they're doing easier, costs less, work better, deliver a more satisfying experience, right? There are any number of things that you might be doing that says, I'm solving some kind of a problem. So that's where you start. You pitch, you get up, you introduce yourself. Very, very brief background on who you are. And I mean like, hi, I'm Mike Bradshaw, executive director of the company lab. And for the last 20 years, I've been building software solutions for industry, okay? Boom. Moving on, I've seen this problem, whatever this problem is you've identified, and you spell it out briefly but persuasively. This problem exists, and it's a big one, okay? Then, I mean, this is really simple. This is not as complicated as your classwork is normally. This is the art of a sale. Here's who I am. You've got a problem. Here's how I fix it. Problem, solution. You're two, three slides in now. You've got five minutes, okay? Problem, solution, two minutes max, okay? Two minutes. Then you're gonna say, got a problem, got a solution, here's the thing that I'm doing that solves this problem, here's how I'm solving the problem, okay? From a product point of view. Don't spend too much time there, though. Just enough to set up, then here's the market, all right? Here are who my customers are, okay? Real easy. Here are the people already playing in the space. That's your, co your competitors, your rivals, okay? Now you're probably three and a half minutes in, and you've sort of set the stage now to go, Okay, I've told you what the problem is, told you what the solution is. I've um, 
indicated some characteristics of my product, right? I've indicated sort of the competitive landscape and the overall market size, the size of the opportunity, and there's a lot of details in this part now, right? And then here's how I'm going to exploit that market. Here's my plan to get in there. Here's the way we're going to do it. And this is basic discussion of the business model at some very succinct, summarized level. Okay? Here's what's going to happen. When we use this plan to hit this market, here are the financial results. And usually what that is, is you'll get a, you'll get a spreadsheet out. Everybody okay with spreadsheets? I guess you are, right? You're STEM students. So you get a spreadsheet out and you set up a pro forma projection. You might have gone through all of this in the classwork and say, okay, here's my revenue projected, here are the cost, here are the profits, okay? Now, for an investor, they look at that and they go, ooh, cool, right? Look at those profits. You are selling them some right to those profits in the future. That's what a deal is, right? When you're selling stock in your company, you're selling the right for the people that bought that stock to have a, that proportion of your cash flow. All right, so if I sold somebody 20% of my company, they're gonna get 20% of the profits of that company over time, okay? Everybody get that? Well, now what you've gotta do, your job in the persuasion thing is to sort of start the conversation with the investors Hopefully this pitch now has stimulated their interest so that they want to get into this, but what they're wondering, and you, depending on the way that you like to sell, and I'm sure you all have your methods, <laughs> it's, uh, you'll either just come right out and tell them you know, wh how you value your company, because here it is. Suppose you project a $5 million profit over three years, okay? We're going we're gonna to lose money the first year, but then we're going to make a lot of money the second year. We're going to make even more money in the third year. That actually has a name. They call it the hockey stick, you know, like the game hockey stick. So this is this movement forever up to the right of unimaginable wealth from your investment. Well, say they tone that down. Maybe you're a realistic person. You've got a nice growth pattern, and you're making $5 million bucks. And in exchange, and in order to make that $5 million, you need a certain amount of investment up front to build the thing that you're, that's gonna make that money, whether it's a software system or it's a technical platform, then you gotta get out there and you gotta market and sell it to people and you've gotta create that revenue that we're talking about. All of that costs money, right? So you subtract those costs from your revenue, you get this, just for want of a better word, we'll just call it profit, earnings, income. And then you go, wait a minute, so I'm, I'm projecting that we're gonna make five million bucks and it's only gonna cost us, cost you, investor, a million to get in the game, let's just say, to build this thing, cost a million dollars, so you're asking the investor for a million dollars. A million dollars, we're making five million in three years, what could be wrong with that? Anybody got a guess about what could be wrong with that? Because I got one. Give me a guess, hmm? Say again? Scam? Scam is a good one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, scam, that is excellent. <laughs> this, is, this, this, this is where the final punchline is, is the team, right? So you're given the financial results and you're talking about this and then the team is supposed to set the people's minds at ease that you're not a bunch of scammers, right? Good point. That's when you're getting up there and you're talking, they're looking and they're going, that guy is scamming me. That, that young lady is scamming me. I've seen that kind before. So there is that element of persuasiveness in who you are and what right you have to be there. But let's say that it's not a scam and that they, they believe that. Yes, ma'am. Risk, right? Suppose all this stuff you just said, even with the best of intentions, just doesn't work out. You might as well have scammed me, right? That's risk. It's, it's, yeah, that's the magic word right there. Risk is the magic word. So that's one of the things, and there are several. So you show them this nice curve, and they're sitting there thinking, that's not gonna happen, right? And they're gonna be sizing it up on their own head. 
And they're going to say, really, it, maybe it looks like that instead of your rosy projections of this. But, you know, you guys have got a point. So they'll negotiate on those numbers with you. So you've got the risk that what you just said isn't going to happen. But you've got an, a, a problem of arithmetic as well. Now, these are both great points. You know, yours speaks to credibility. And credibility actually is, speaks to risk. Are, are we the people that can make this stuff come true? Can you inject that in people's heads? So, you know, you're going to want to say, here's our team and here's our qualifications for doing this. And since you're high school students, you know, put the best, on, best face on it. But, you know, but think about this. It, it is a general principle. It will serve you well over time. People invest in teams. So, boom, you started with, Here's who I am, and very brief thing. Then in the end, you're going to want to talk about your team to address those two issues to a certain degree. But the arithmetical thing, the one where it's just a matter of straight arithmetic, is, OK, so I'm getting a million dollars from you. Thank you. And you get some right to this $5 million cash flow. OK? Well, how much of a right do they have? It's a right that's in proportion to the number of shares they bought with their million dollars. So if, if I say to you, I'm going to sell you my company for, that is producing $5 million, and I'm going to sell it to you for a million dollars, well, that's a great deal, except for the fact that there's a lot of risk involved in actually making that $5 million. But what really happens in these stock transactions is you're the founders, right? You're not selling your company outright most of the time. You think it's worth far more than really what I'm trying to get from you right now to get us started. So I'm going to sell you 20% of my company, or 25%, or 40%, or some number, but it's not the whole thing. So now, the person that is investing in you is like, oh, my million dollars gets me 20% of that cash flows. And I've got to wait three years to get anything, right? That's a big problem for an investor because, as I mentioned before, they've got their money in the bank account. That's sitting right there. It's looking pretty good. Maybe it's not earning everything they want. They want to put some money into higher risk profile things for the hope of a higher return later, right? Then they're going to get on just putting their money in the bank and earning whatever interest it does or buying treasury bills or putting money into the public stock market, right? So people are looking for a higher return, but, and they are willing to accept higher risk for that, but they are going to look at, oh, you just sold me 5 million bucks of revenue, but you're only really offering me 20% of that. And so they're going to size their share of the revenue that they get to the amount of the investment that you're asking them to make right now. And this is when the really interesting issue of the time value of money comes in, right? Their money today is worth a lot to them, right? It's worth a lot to them. It's, it's money right here today. Your promise of money in the future is worth a lot less, all right? So if I'm promising you, you gave me a million bucks, and I'm going to give you 20% of our cash flows, and they're going to start, you know, maybe three years out, so I'm saying, OK, I'm going to deliver a million dollars to you in year three, and I'm going to deliver a million and a half to you in year four, and I'm going to deliver two million to you in year five. OK? What they're going to do, and you don't, I don't know how deep you've gone in this, right? But there's a nifty little formula that is called the net present value calculation. And this is, OK, you're asking me for a million dollars right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up over time the cash flows that you're promising me. And then I'm going to divide those cash flows by an, an amount that is what's called the cost of capital, the hurdle rate, my desired rate of return. So I don't make investments in speculative ventures unless I make 40%. Right? You want to, let's just say, and that's not unusual. There are people that wouldn't invest in unless you could promise them or convince them that you have a good shot at producing a 500% return, what they call a 5x return. You know, this is the game you're playing with this. 
very few are going to come into a really high risk kind of opportunity with a sort of a standard 8, 12% return, which would be fine on kind of gold plated investment opportunities, right? So you're trying to convince them to part with their hard earned money, and which has a lot of opportunities they could put it in that don't have any kind of risk associated. They don't have to worry about being scammed. They don't have to worry about, can you execute on this? Does that market really exist? Do you know how to put together a team to sell into that market? Right? These are all the things that your pitch should be convincing the listener of. But even then, even if you do a really good job, look what happens. This formula is the cash flow divided by one plus that rate of return. Let's just say for easy numbers, that's 20%. And we're dealing with an annual 20% rate. Okay? Interest rate, whatever you want to call it. One plus that number, so 1.2 in the first year. You exponentiate to the first period, so it's one plus the risk of return exponentiated to the period. So in the second year, it's 1.2 squared. In the third year, it's 1.2 cubed. In the fourth period, it's 1.2 to the fourth, okay? Those numbers start getting big, and they divide, decrease the cash flow that you projected for that period, and that's what you call accounting for the risk. Then you add all that up, and you see, first of all, you cut them in fifths, right? Because you only sold them 20% of the thing. You're probably thinking you're a scammer. Uh, but you cut them in fifth, and then that money tomorrow, next day, five years from now, isn't worth nearly what the money today is. And those, what, that formula I just told you is the thing that makes Wall Street turn. The movement of stock prices is all about more sophisticated forms of that basic equation, okay? And it doesn't matter what kind of investor you're talking to, what they say their concepts are, at the very bottom of it, it's some measure that they have that says, I'm willing to exchange my hard-earned capital today in exchange for a right to participate in the promises that you're making about next year, the year after, and year on. That's a tough sell. Let me ask you this, if I, with all the credibility that I have because Mr. Wilson introduces me, if I walked up to you and said, great, you guys have put, to, put aside a thousand bucks and you were gonna use that for your college, right? But I got a better idea. I could make you 3,000 bucks before you even go to college, you know? Or plus you won't even need to go to college, you're so rich, you know? It's like, would you do that? Would you part with your $1,000 that you need next week in order to you know, possibly make some money from this lunatic that's like got the greatest thing? You would do it? Yeah. All right. That's good. Then you come to our next investor meeting. I love it. And good for you. Because there's no easy answer to that, right? I mean, it's kind of, I set it up so that you'd be a dummy to do it. But you had faith. And I think it's really because of the referral, right? So that's credibility that we're getting. This is, but this is the thing, when, you, when you're, you need to know, when you're pitching, you need to understand your audience, right? Like, so you, if you understand, because you listen to this right here, and you realize that, you know, wow, that probably is the way these guys are thinking, you know? You're trying to persuade them to invest their money into a speculative venture. So that pitch has got to be pretty good, okay? So that means you've got to be solving a big problem, right? who I am, problem, solution, right? The way that you're solving that problem, like what is the core technology? What is it about the agricultural space problem that you're solving in the agricultural space that allows you to solve that problem better than other choices they may have, right? And to invest in that. For you, it's like, here's a big problem. You know, interns need assignments. There's no platform that really concentrates on that. I've got it. Here's the way it works, okay? So a little bit about the product. Here's what happens when we solve it, all right? This market is this size, okay? And you've, your research has probably helped you understand certain characteristics of that market, all right? Here are the competitors playing in it now. Here's how they're doing things. Here's how I position our product against those competitors, okay? 
and you need to have some treatment of that. But the big thing, the big thing is, is while you're giving summary information, what you're trying to do is to help the investor, the audience, understand that even though I'm only telling you this little bit, I'm giving you the high level summary, I'm an expert. I understand this stuff. I've got something that's really cool. I believe this can work, right? And I have enormous detail over there <laughs> that I'm not going to show you on the screen. You don't say these things. It's a function of the credibility that you're able to present when you're talking to people, the authority that you're able to project. So pitch content's one thing, but you've got to stand up there and you've got to just tell them. Like, aren't they, you know, isn't this great <laughs> that we're here and you're here to, to hear about what we're doing and how we can work together, right? That's the attitude, and you've got to have that. And they've got to feel your passion. They've got to feel it. You know, they've got to, because if you don't believe in it, they're not going to believe in it. And that's not a matter of the words you say or you say, I did this because I want the world to be a better place. You know? Well, we all do. <laughs> we all want the world to be a better place. That is, investors don't care. They want, they want to believe that you are going to work night and day to, to get this thing done. And you've got to display that passion, but you don't have to tell them, you know, all the big effects. Stay focused on what you're doing and why it matters. Right? So, review one more time. How are we doing on time? Are we okay? Okay, great. Review. You're going to get up, introduce yourself, and then immediately go into a discussion of what the, what the problem is, what the solution is. Best advice I can give you about those two things is to use imagery, visual imagery. These kinds of things should be evocative, meaning it's going to pull emotion out of people, and images do that. The thing you don't want to do is put like 20 bullet points on a slide, right, for this kind of presentation, because they're going to be listening to you, and you don't want to go, point one, start reading that off, or what I call, go down the rabbit trail on every bullet. Next thing you know, five minutes has gone by, and you're still on slide one. You want to be, bam, hit them. Persuasive imagery is the best way to go. A few words on both of those slides. And that carries over all the way through. The less you put on the slide, the better off you are, provided that you have command of the material and you have the backup material necessary to provide details. OK? So you've got, I think, with a five-minute presentation, you just need one slide in each one of those major areas and be prepared to talk about it. Another technique is just use your fly-ons, right? You don't have to put everything on the slide all at once. So you've got some imagery up there, but then if you're going to make several subpoints, click, something comes on the screen, click, something comes on the screen, and you build each one of those things. Finally, I'm going to close with make sure that it's a story. You know, we're talking about these kind of segments, right? And as if they're totally separate things, but they're really all elements of a single unified story, right? This is the story of my business and why it matters. And if you join me in partnership, how you're going to profit, how we're going to profit, and how we're going to accomplish what we set out to do, what I've described to you. And it's a story. It's not this and this and this and this and this. One thing leads to the other in each one of these things. So be careful to Pay attention to your transition elements. Summarize information that you've given before. Bring it back up, you know? Just keep that narrative unity and cohesiveness flowing. And then at the end, when you're ready to ask them for something, they're going to be ready to hear it. Okay? Let's uh, thank Mr. Bradshaw for his time today. That was awesome. Thank you. Um, we're hoping to go downstairs and tour the co in just a second. We would love to have you. Great. So we're going to do that. Thank you again. Sure thing. Um, I don't know how to make this thing shut up. So sure, I can help you. Here you oh, go. There it is. The mirror. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All right. So a couple housekeeping items. First of all, um, everyone is going to talk during their pitch. Everyone's going to have a chance to speak. So that's going to be important. Every person of your group. We're going to have 
on January 13th, we're going to have two parts. We're going to have where everyone goes and gives a five-minute pitch. And then the top three or four teams are going to be part of the showcase, which are going to have the judges with the money. All right? So the top three or four or five, depending if you're that good, I'm talking about really, really good, they then go to the showcase. That's the one where the parents, the community, the mayor, everybody's going to be there. They're all going to be watching. And we're going to have the press there. It's going to be a big deal. All right. Everyone talks. It's going to be five minutes pitch. You're going to need to make sure that um, you practice this. So in order to practice it, there's a couple things. If you spend 15 minutes a day for the first, up, like the week before, practicing going over this, it's going to help. I'm not talking about a lot of time. I'm talking about a little time that will really help. The second thing that will really help your nerves is if you will do me a really big favor and videotape yourself. If you videotape yourself giving the pitch, you'll notice hand gestures that might look off. You might look, I don't, when I talk, I don't make eye contact and I'm looking down all the time. You might notice that you might notice that you don't project well. You might notice a lot of different things about yourself. Everyone has one thing in common when they hear themselves on video. They hate the way they sound. Don't worry about how you sound as long as you're not monotone and just speak in that, my name is David Wilson and I'd like to, Noah. Um, <laughs> just as long as you're kind of more animated, um, <laughs> as long as you're a little bit more animated, that would be really good. So videotape yourself. The purpose of the videotape is twofold. First of all, it lets me know that you're ready for this because you're going to send me the video. And that's a non-negotiable. You have to do it. The second thing is, the second part of, the, part of it is you're going to watch it and you're going to see yourself. You're going to get better. All right? So we're going to tour the rest of the space. I'm going to just kind of take you guys around this floor. Then we're going to go downstairs um, and uh, we'll go from there. But thank you guys for coming today. Don't leave. We're going to walk and talk together. All right? Thank you guys.